Ladies and gentlemen, can you guess where I'm at? Because it has to do with that car behind me, which is actually a very rare Mini. Let me give you some more hints. There's a boat. I'm wearing shorts, which I never do. And there's plenty of sun and sand. Have you figured it out yet? Well, let me tell you about that car. It's the Mini Cooper S convertible, but it's the Florida edition. And Tommy and I are in Florida, and coming up in this video, we're gonna take it for a ride, and we're gonna show you all the cool and quirky things about that car, starting with uh, this. Now, Tommy, you know this because you actually had a Mini Cooper S convertible. What model did you have? It was the R52. Yeah, that was the uh, first uh, model lineup that was under BMW ownership. One of the coolest and most interesting quirks about this car is that not only do you get a convertible, but you also get a sunroof. So, as we just demonstrated, the first click of the switch opens up the sunroof, and the second click, of course, does this. And since we're in the Florida edition, I think we have to take the top down. Actually, you know what, Tommy? I screwed up. You know what I forgot? The coolest part of the top. All right, let me put it back up and we'll show them. How long does it take to put this thing up? About, it's pretty quick. About 18 seconds. Yeah, yeah, that's very quick. And then once it's up, show them the coolest part. Check this out. This Florida Edition has a Mini Yours soft top with a Union Jack. It's actually in the fabric material here on the roof, which is a really, really cool touch. Tommy, come on over here. Let me show them something else because there's another Union Jack that comes as part of the Florida Edition that you won't be able to see until we actually go uh, inside the garage because it lights up. So let's. Take the top down, hop in the car, and show them this next cool feature. Tommy, if you love the Union Jack, you're gonna love this because, well, let me show you. Once we pull into the garage here, just uh, focus the camera on this little piece of trim right in front of you, okay? And watch what happens. In the bright sunlight, it just looks kind of, well, kind of black, right? Yep. Watch what happens when we pull inside. Wait, are you waiting for it? Waiting for it, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Oh, look at that. It's a hidden British flag. Glows blue. Yep, glows blue. One other thing, why do now all minis have glasses? Yeah, they all have like spectacles. Why don't you show them? As I'm sure you know, BMW bought mini and Basically, this is a BMW power plant underneath, and the easiest way you can tell is right there because it says 2X. Just like any other BMW, you actually have to pull the hood release twice to get it to open, just like a 3 Series. But here's a thoughtful feature. Check this out. I pull it twice, and over here, I get a little message that says, Engine compartment hot. Open carefully. Well, there you have it. So you won't be surprised with what's under the hood because what's under the hood is a twin-powered BMW four-cylinder, the same one you'd find in the X1. Actually, it's the same engine you'll find in a lot of BMWs. And Tommy, how much horsepower and torque does it put out? Yeah, it's about 189 horsepower and just under 210 pound-feet of torque. You know, there's something that is no good about this, and you know what that is? What? The one that you had had a supercharger. Yep. And it had a functional hood scoop. And this has a hood scoop, but there's no functionality, it's just style. Now I had a chance actually to drive the first generation Mini and I still have a smile on my face from that. That was so much fun. Yeah, like the, the Austin Mini. Right, yeah, yeah, the one that uh, started it all. All right, I'm gonna give it the beans. Yep. How fast do you think it is, zero to 60? Um, I think it's like, we won't mid know. sixes. The yeah. speed limit here is like 35. Mini says it's like mid sixes. Uh, I would say it's quickish. Now another feature of this Mini, and of course it's not unique to this one, are these kind of toggle switches. Uh, ever since the one you've had, ever since actually the very first one, Mini has done them and they're really cool and they kept them for this newest edition. Uh, and I love these toggle switches. It's just such an elegant and cool way to present uh, something that's very different and yet something that every car has. Hey Tommy, what if I want to go surfing tomorrow and I don't want to take the top down? 
Well, Minnie has thought of that. Open up this tailgate, rated for 176 pounds here, and you'll see these two easy load levers back here, and this whole rear part of the soft top is hinged. You can see you've got a parcel shelf that would just simply come out, and I can fold the seats down, bam. And then I could stick my surfboard out like that and cruise around with it protruding from the back of your mini convertible. How cool is that? You know, one of the things that makes this car really unusual, besides the fact that it's tiny, yep. well, as tiny as cars get today, yep. is that it's actually got seats for four real people. So how about if I put myself in the back and see how much room actually I have? So you'll sit in the front here, right? Okay. Put yourself kind of in, in a comfortable position, and then I'll sit in the back and see if we can actually get four, well, two people back to back. Okay, so you go in the back first. Nice. Nice. You back here? I'm back here. Oh, it's scalloped, so it does give me a little bit of knee room. Let's see if I can get a shot of that here. Yeah, yeah look at that. Yeah, it's now, good. keep in mind I'm 6'2", so why don't you sit in front? Oh, yeah. Tons of room in the front. Yeah, can you move up? Yeah. Can you move up more? Can you move up even more? Mm, not really. Ah, that's better. Uh, you know, it's not bad, dude. Uh, the one issue I have with this back seat, besides the fact that there's a fly in my ear, yeah. is uh, that uh, the back seat is pretty upright. Uh, so that you're really kind of like sitting, oh, I don't know, a church, right? You feel like- On uh, the pew? On the pew, yeah. You feel like you're not exactly in the most comfortable of positions. Yeah, but there's actually pretty, for such a tiny car, there's a pretty decent amount of room back here. Yeah, and it's pretty easy to get in and out. You know, it's not, it's nice. Yeah, it is nice. You know, yours uh, was much smaller and the back was definitely a penalty box. Yep. Here, it's not bad. I mean, you could actually, you know, get four people to go to lunch and they wouldn't complain too much. Well, this Mini has been out for a few years now. I think it came out in 2014. Yeah. But it was over four inches longer than the one it replaced. So it's it's much bigger than the even the first generation I had. I gotta say, I do love this interior, this kind of, uh, Cognac colored, uh, French stitched. Diamond stitched, really. Yeah, diamond French stitched uh, interior. It looks really classy. Uh, unfortunately, the one thing we don't have is cooled seats. We have heated seats, which is part of the Florida edition, but we don't have cooled seats. Now, you know, I get heated seats in a convertible, but in Florida, I'd love to have cooled seats do as well. Do you like this color? What's it called? So this is Starlight Blue. Yep. Um, and the Florida edition is only available in two colors the starlight blue and then there's a Caribbean it's like a green it's like a almost like a turquoise yeah I love this color it really pops uh, and especially with that kind of cognac colored interior it looks really nice I think the black wheels are a thing right now uh, of course this is the uh, JCW package yeah, right it's got the appearance package that's why I'm doing the air quotes what do you get for that you get JCW wheels let's show them uh, uh, a more aggressive front end down here we've got these larger 17 inch jcw style wheels and then in the back it's been tweaked a little bit too so it's it's more aggressive back here and here's my favorite thing now most minis have what looks like eyeballs in the back yep this has basically the union jack led full led yeah and that's really cool because those eyeballs are creepy dude i love this much better if it were my mini i definitely go with the union jack taillight tommy so uh you know why this is such a rare mini why is that because according to many they're only making 200 of these special florida editions and i think it should have a giant state of florida sticker on it no it shouldn't that looks like a you know what that's bad idea bad idea don't go there so how much is a florida edition how much does it cost and what does it give you florida edition is 8200 okay and it's pretty much all inclusive so power folding mirrors um garage door opener uh, comfort access keys a cool soft top heated front seats uh we have this unique um piano black finish uh, Sirius XM, LED headlights, automatic climate control, so it's it also gives you the big screen here and the JCW appearance so, package. So it basically packages a lot of different things. Yeah, pretty much, and it's only available in two colors. We talked about that already. Yes, we did, but they're, uh, the official colors are starlight blue yeah. with a Chesterfield malt brown interior. Okay. Or Caribbean aqua metallic with a lounge satellite gray interior. Wait, what's this called? It's called Chesterfield... Malt brown. Malt? Malt. Like you mean like a beer? Yep, malt. I called it a cognac. I was off. Yeah, you were off. All right, well, let's talk about how it drives. So the previous generation that you owned, actually, was uh, super fun to drive because it was tiny and it was fast. Well, let's clarify. That's two generations old now. All right, so the previous generation that you didn't own 
but the one before that <laughs> that you did own was tiny and fast and very nimble. Yes, it was, and it was also pretty poorly made in that there was a ton of cowl shake, yeah. um, and it was pretty rattly, yeah. uh, but it was incredibly go-kart-like. There's that saying, right? It's much more fun to drive a small or a slow car fast than a fast car slow. Uh, and this is still a small and fast car, so driving it fast is not as special as driving the old one fast. Yeah, I mean, and this one has 30-ish more horsepower than the one we had. Yeah, and it's also turbocharged versus supercharged, so there's a little bit of turbo lag. Just a little bit. Yeah, there's a little bit. There we go. Right? There's just a little bit of turbo lag. I did like your engine note a little bit better on yours. This one just feels uh, a little uh, growly but not snarly. Does that yeah, make sense? Yeah, I agree. It's got a, I mean, it's certainly not buzzy. Yeah. Um, but it's it's not exactly poppy and exciting. No, I, I want it to, like, you know, start my heart a fluttering. But if you want a faster one that is more growly and poppy, you yeah. can get the, the John Cooper Works. No, I want snarly and poppy. Well, th that's also snarly. It's more snarly. It's got a different exhaust. Growly and snarly are two different things in my mind. Ugh. You know what I'm saying? It's the same thing. No, a snarl is like, Argh. a growl is like, Argh. Okay. Does the that same make sense? Thing. No, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> you know, Tommy, I think Mini's taken quirks and eccentricity to the 10th degree because let's talk about wireless charging. Now, many cars have wireless charging and basically it's a little shelf, you put the phone on it and charge wirelessly. Not many, of course, they've had to reinvent it. And the way they do that is right here in the center console or armrest is a little wireless charger with a spring-loaded doodad, for lack of a better word. It's a clip. That, it's a clip that puts your phone in place and there it is, it's charging. Well, it keeps it secure. Well, it keeps it secure and keeps it out of sight. So if somebody's trying to steal your phone, they'll never know it's in there. Of course, it also keeps it out of sight if you're trying to like text my friend Steve, who just texted me during the middle of this little presentation. Yeah, what is Steve texting? He's in Chicago. I get the Hello Kitty, I get the So Cold, I get, yeah. A lot of memes. That's a lot of memes. Probably more memes than I can deal with while doing this review. But there you have it, now you know. Hey Tommy, here's an interesting quirk. Uh, how much does this bad boy cost? Well, the one you see right here, yeah. 41450 is the MSRP. $41,000. So if I wanted to, let's say, move the C forward, I could do it with the push of one button. No. No? You mean I have to actually manually, yeah, manually move it? How about if I want to recline it? Push of one button, right? No. <sighs> Manual? Good God. How about lumber support? Push of one button. Well, we get it. It doesn't have power seats, but it also has some really cool stuff. Yeah, but for 41k, dude, power seats. Come on, Mini, you you can do that. I know. I know it's very European to do your own seats, and I'm a big, big ass American, and I'm whining about power seats. But it's a lot of money. It might have power seats. It does have paddle shifters. That's nice. Yeah, but check this out in here. Yeah. 8.8 inch touchscreen display. Yeah, um, that's a square and a circle. Well, yeah, they did keep the circle. So, um, of course. Stop beeping. The circle is reminiscent of the old school speedometer that you'd find in an old Mini. Yeah, they moved it into the center right here. Yeah, but it's with, permanently in the center. Yeah, with the tachometer. But back in the day, that's where the speedometer was. It was the high tin speedometer. Yeah, and check this out. The colors change on the ring. So the ring does all sorts of funky colors and shifts, and it goes up and down with the volume depending on what you're listening to. It's pretty cool. I love that the track changes when you go into sport mode. Yeah, it's got different modes, three yeah. different modes. Okay. Also has Apple CarPlay. And check this out, if I use the very iDrive-like system to navigate between the menus, I have the openometer, which tells you how many hours you've had the top open um, total. So we've only had this top open for an hour and 45 minutes. We're the first people to drive this car, by the way. It's got 260 miles on it. So two hours of open top fun in this brand new Mini. Yeah, and look, Floor Edition has palm trees. How cool is that? Yep, we got palm trees. We got the outside temperature here. What's this thing? It looks like you're hitting a uranium porcupine. No, it's a shrub. You sure that's not like a like a superhero porcupine that got bitten by a... No, it's a shrub. Atomic snake and now is all... No? It's, it's the beach. It's a beach shrub. Okay. All right. Well, look, you can even see like Miami behind it. I don't think that's what that is. You think that's Miami? What, you think it's Fort Lauderdale? Palm Springs? 
Sure. No, not Palm Springs. It's, uh, what's it called? Palm uh, Beach? Palm Beach. See, I'm getting old. I'm already confusing Palm Beach and Palm Springs. I wonder if it's got the new Hey Mini. Let's try it. Hey Mini! Pardon? Hey Mini! To change to a settings menu, say the menu name. For example, system settings. Hey Mini! Let me turn it off. It doesn't do Hey Mini. I want to try one. All right. Here you go, try it. Engine oil. Engine oil level. Please continue using manual control. There you go. Exciting. Measure, oh look, we can measure the engine oil. Start, Start measurement. measurement. You know what that means, don't you? What? There's no dipstick. Oh. Oh, did you hear that? The engine just revved up. Yeah. This is, Tommy, this is award-winning YouTube yeah, video territory here. Watching, riveting TV. Watching the mini uh, measure engine oil. Why is it so slow? So, by the way, um, what do you think of this one? I mean, you know, you used to have the old one, which was a little bit raw. It was a little bit more, um, well, it was just smaller and more kind of mini. What do you think of this guy? Well, it certainly is a lot more refined. These seats are incredible. Yeah. There's a lot more room on the interior. This whole center console doesn't shake around like ours did. Yeah. Um, but it certainly is maybe a little bit too grown up. I really like the center mounted speedometer. That was really cool. Things were a little bit smaller. The whole car was just a little bit uh, tidier. Yeah, don't you think it was a lot easier when you just took a dipstick and stuck it into the engine to find out what your oil was? Yeah, we're still to... waiting. We're still waiting, yeah. I mean, sometimes it seems like um, progress is two steps backwards and one step forward. All right, here we are. Our riveting YouTube submission to the streamies is coming. And the answer is... Engine oil okay? <laughs> All of that just to say okay. Oh no, look, we got a little... Oh, there you go. Hey, I think we need to check just to make sure there's no... Uh, let's just check to make sure there's no dipstick. Yep. I bet you there isn't. Let's find out. Damn, dude, there isn't even no room for a dipstick in this thing. Look how crowded that is. That is a packaging marvel. Well, unless you're a mechanic, in which case it might be more of a... Yeah, I think in order to like change out the turbo, you have to take the whole front fascia off. And I'm not just talking about like this, I'm talking about the whole front fascia to get at it. Look, you got a little positive terminal here. Nice. Huh, that's cool. So, you know, let's talk about kind of hits and misses, right? So let's start with the misses and then get to the hits. So the, the misses in my book is the um, styling is a little too bulbous, like you said. Yep. Uh, it's a little expensive. It's a little expensive. Uh, it's a little bit porky now. Yeah, it's, and it's not as fun as the old one. Yeah, and it's not as fun. But the hits are the exact converse of that, right? So by making it a little porkier, it's a lot more luxurious. So there's a lot more creature comforts in here. Yep, and the ride is much smoother. Ride is much smoother. It's much more buttoned down. It feels like, uh, uh, even though it's expensive, it feels much more expensive. Yep, and the materials are nicer. And, and I think... Um, one thing that is exceptionally good is the ergonomics. They've really improved the interior ergonomics, so it's easier to use. All right, this is cool, but it's plastic. But behind the little lid is something that's pretty unusual. Some cars have little straps that keep the cap from falling out, and some cars have little holders to keep the cap nice and tidy when you're filling up. The Mini, of course, has both. So we need to talk about competition, Tommy. Yep. Uh, and let's face it, I think Mini is one of the few brands that actually you can get almost every vehicle in with a manual transmission. Yeah, that's true. You can get almost, I think, just about every configuration other than maybe like the plug-in hybrid countryman in a manual. Which means this really has no competition because there's no other car that you can get that's a four-seater convertible with a manual transmission. Ours is automatic, but you could get it in a manual. Well, I think that's not entirely true. What? BMW 228's manual. They can get a 2 Series in a manual convertible. Um, Fiat's Abart you can get in a convertible with a manual transmission. All right, so there are a couple cars you can get that still have a manual transmission, but those <laughs> cars, the BMW maybe sort of competes. The Abart is a lot cheaper. Yep. Um, what other four-seater convertibles? Uh, there's, of course, the Cascada, which is going away, which is a Buick. Yep, but, I mean, I think you can also cross-shop this with two-seater convertibles. Because let's be real, these rear seats, they work, but they're not for adults for long journeys. They're more of a temporary matter, in my opinion. Well, so at 41,000, you can cross shop that with the Jeep Wrangler. Yeah, that's true. I bet, that's you, and I bet you people do. Or um, a Miata. Or a Miata. 
Miata or the Fiat, you know, the yeah, exactly. Uh, the um, right. Fiat 124. Yeah. All right, Tommy, let's sum this car up in three words. I'm going to use two, you're going to use one. So my first word is expensive. Okay. What's your What's your next word? Blue. <sighs> Come on, give me something more than blue. People can see it's blue. Something that describes the car. If you had to describe it in one word, what would it be? Mm, zippy. All right, so we've got expensive, zippy, and <laughs> my third and final word is blue. charming. No, oh. not blue, charming. So it's a charming, zippy, yet expensive Ford person convertible, which for Florida is just about perfect. As always, guys, this is Roman reporting for the Fast Lane car. And of course, behind the camera, Blue Tommy saying thanks for watching and check out TFLcar.com for more news views and Blue Mini Cooper convertible reviews. No, expensive, zippy, but charming.